Hey, Planeswalkers, Mithras here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Welcome to today's episode of Top Deck, where we are covering a Naya Landfall deck. Now, this deck is a Platinum to Mythic 6 plus win deck, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video because we do got a lot to cover here. Now, feel free to go down below in the description. There are timestamps there or across the bottom of the track that should be labeled uh, for you to skip the portion of the video that makes sense. We're going to uh, talk about the strategy and objective of this deck. We're going to get into a deep dive on the deck list, and then we're also going to talk about the sideboard and how we're going to sideboard uh, for our best of three matches uh, in a how-to guide style. And then at the last but not least, we will go play some competitive magic for you today in both best of one and best of three. So if you do got questions, comments, let me know down below. Happy to help. You guys can pop in the Discord server. That information is down below in the description as well. Um, on top of that, Planeswalkers, the deck list, deck links are there as well for you. Now, one other thing, I truly appreciate your support, so please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there as I try and make my way towards 10,000 subs this year, and additionally, please feel free to like the video. So in terms of the strategy, we have a Naya Landfall deck. So Naya is is uh, the red, the white, and the green color schema. So the uh, the uh, mountains, the plains, and the forests giving us the Naya uh, colors of the magic color wheel here. And what we have going on is a landfall. So that is the key. That is the main mechanic of this deck. Um, we'll use Scute Swarm here. So this one in particular, uh, it's landfall trigger. So landfall is an ability that triggers when a land enters the battlefield under our control in terms of Scute Swarm. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we're going to create a 1 1 green insect creature token. If we control six or more lands, we get to create a copy of this bad boy instead. Now, many people are familiar with this card. Uh, but what the whole point of this deck is, is not only leveraging these landfall triggers, um, but we got a couple of different options. We can either, we we, we really actually go wide early game. Um, so we have things like Scute, and we also have things like Felidar Retreat. Um, we can do ping damage or build big creatures. So that's one thing that people forget a lot. So Fearless Fledgling, Fledgling is one. Um, Ashaya, Soul of the Wild gets real big. We got big flyers. Um, and then when we get to these bad boys here at the top, then we can do a lot of damage and we get additional abilities um, like like this with the Minotaur Warrior here where we can attack again um, or Ancient uh, Green Warden where we can play lands from our graveyard. So essentially continuously triggering uh, Evolving Wilds or Fabled Passage if we want to. Um, and then last but not least to cover us off, we have good old Ugin. So I would consider this deck really kind of a mid-range to late game. Uh, it can excel here. Uh, with some of these creatures that we do have, uh, but really you're going to be able to take it home uh, towards the top end. Now, this deck is not focused around too many interactions against your opponent. Uh, and what I'm saying there is we only have Banishing Light to really target something. Everything else is uh, focused on our board or focused on some sort of ramp uh, to get us closer uh, and optimize that end game into a faster uh, game for us as well. So that is what we have going on. That is the key objective with this deck. Um, again, really focus on that mid-range to late game battle with a really uh, few number or a decent number of closers there while optimizing across the landfall mechanic uh, from Zendikar's Rising here. Um, so that is what we got going on. Now we're going to talk about the deck uh, in its totality here today because there are several things that we do want to take a look at and then mention uh, as well here. Now, first off, we got Gilded Goose. This flying bird creature, uh, when it enters, uh, creates a food token. Food tokens here, we can sacrifice the artifact for two and gain... Uh gain uh, three life, or in terms of Gilded Goose, uh, we can also tap this guy and create a mana if we need to for some ramp power, um, or we can create a food token uh, with it as well. Then we got uh, Fearless Fledgling, as I mentioned. Every time a land enters the battlefield uh, under our control, we get to put a plus one, plus one counter on Fearless Fledgling. Uh, it gains flying until end of turn. 
Then we have Lotus Cobra. So when a land enters, uh, we under our control, we get to add one mana of any color. Uh, this is a great, great ramper card for us. Now uh, we also have Brushfire Elemental. So this guy has got haste. You see this typically in the Gruel decks, uh, Gruel Aggro decks. It's it can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. It's got that landfall ability where a creature that or a land enters, it gets plus two plus two till end of turn. Um, we got Bashing Light. So this is one of the few cards, as I mentioned, that interacts with our opponent's board from the main board. Uh, where this enters, we can exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So we have to be very targeted in terms of how we're going to use this. Uh, we got Valakut Exploration. So this card is very powerful. Uh, at a three drop, whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we get to exile the top card of our library. So really, really gaining card advantage here. Um, we may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and then at the beginning of our end step, if there are cards exiled with this card, uh, put them into our graveyard, and then this card's going to deal uh, that much damage to each opponent. So Velocut Exploration, that is. Um, then we got Cultivate. Um, so Cultivate allows us, uh, as Sorcery Speed, to search a library for up to two basic land cards. We can reveal those cards and put them on the battlefield tapped. Uh, and the other uh, in our hand, then we get to shuffle our library. Then we, we already talked about Skute Swarm. Now uh, we got Felidar's Retreat. So this is a very powerful enchantment card for four. Um, when a land enters, we can choose either creating a 2-2 two, two, uh, white cat beast creature token, or we can put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature we control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. Um, we have enablers like Migratory Greathorn here. So it's mutate for three. Uh, when it enters, when it mutates, we can search library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield feel tapped and then shuffle our library we have good old bane slayer angel so this guy's super powerful it's a flying first striker with lifelink protection from demons protection from dragons uh, a nice game finisher and then we got nice things to kind of uh particularly fill out our retreat uh, that can help make this guy even bigger and better um, we got Ashaya, Soul of the Wild. So another really powerful top end card here where um, its power and toughness are equal in the number of lands we control. Non-token creatures we control are forest lands in addition to their other types. Uh, they're still affected by summoning sickness. So this guy gets really big um, and can give you some tricks and combat tricks in terms of, uh, you know, if it, if it has to target a non-land creature, um, that's what's gonna happen with some of these guys where they can't be targeted because of good old Lashaya here. And then we have uh, Morong or Moreg, uh, Fury of Akoam. Um, so here, each creature we control gets plus one, plus zero for each time it has attacked this turn. It, it, we get landfall again with this guy. Whenever a land enters on the battlefield uh, under our control, if it's our main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. And then at the beginning of that combat, uh, untap all creatures we control as well. So a very, very big body. Hoping we can get this guy worked out today. Um, really, really enjoy playing this card. Then we have Ancient and the Green Warden. So here this guy's got a reach of 5-7, big body. Uh, we may pay, play lands from our graveyard. Um, so we get some recursion here with Fabled Passage, Evolving Wilds. Um, will be fun to see if we can get this off too. If the land enters the battlefield, causes a triggered ability of a permanent, we control the trigger. That ability triggers an additional time, my friends. Um, so super nasty, gonna be very powerful in this deck. And then last but not least, we got good old Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. Uh, a nice top end card here, where if we need to, we can recover with him. Uh, this creature, aside from all of these things, has that ability to interact with our opponent's deck. Uh, and with primarily with its minus X or we can exile each permanent uh, with convert mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. Just remember, we're going to hit ourselves most likely with that too. Um, and then two or plus two, we can deal three damage to any target. And then minus 10 is going to be very powerful for us where we can gain seven life, draw seven cards, then put up to seven permanent cards uh, from our hand on the battlefield. So that is the main board, my friends. We got a nice chunk of Mortal Lands here to optimize. We got nice uh, thinning here with Evolving Wilds and Fable Passage uh, to also get additional triggers. 
on our landfills, which is gonna be very important. So that is the main board. Uh, we're now gonna move in and talk about the sideboard here. Um, so first off, we got Tormod's Crypt here. This guy enters, um, nothing happens until we tap it and sacrifice it. And then we can exile all cards from target player's graveyard. So we can also exile cards from our graveyard if we need to, uh, which may be important depending on the deck that you're playing, like a rogues deck. Um, so you can keep that in mind. It's also important to play against uh, Rakdos mid-range, Rakdos escape decks that your opponents may be playing, um, any deck that may be trying to leverage the graveyard. Um, these could be some of those uh, ultimatum decks. Uh, Abzan ultimatum, I think, is the recursion one. Um, so that that's some idea there for you too. Anytime that your opponent's gonna try and leverage the graveyard, this is what you're gonna wanna play. Um, then we got Chainweb Arachner here. This creature's got reach. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. We can escape it for five, exile four other cards from our graveyard. Chain Web's gonna escape with three plus one plus one counters on it. So this is really, really good against rogues. Um, it's also really good uh, against aggro at times if you need it. Um, so you can keep that in mind because you can bring it back uh, and it does become a bigger body, uh, which, which can get hard to go through. Um, so primarily rogues, but otherwise you can play it against things like Mono Red. You can play against Gruul um, just to have some of those blockers early game if you need to. We do have a decent amount of stuff here in the early game, so that is a consideration um as well but again particularly you're gonna you're gonna put this in for rogues then we got glass casket so you're gonna play this against any aggro deck uh this guy here when it enters the uh battlefield it is an artifact we get to exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or less until glass class glass casket uh, leaves the battlefield. So these are things like mono red, mono white, uh, aggro, life gain, uh, gruel aggro, boros warriors, uh, boros knights, mardu knights, uh, Winata decks, Naya, Boros, you call it, you name it, we got it, um, those kinds of things, and also rogues. Um, so good, good options here with Glass Casket. That's always a nice one to put in. Um, Inscription of Abundance here. So this card's pretty sweet. Um, it's one of the cheaper ones in terms of the inscriptions uh, from Zendikar's Rising. So this guy's an instant spell. Uh, we can kick it for an additional three. Uh, we can choose one. If this spell was kicked, choose any of the number instead. Um, so for five, we get every thing. Uh, the first one there, we can put uh, two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Uh, target player gains X life, or X is the greatest power among creatures they control. And then target creature you control fights uh, target creature you don't control. I actually really like this. Um, in the aggro lineup, I also like it in the mid-range, uh, particularly because you get some additional value on it. Um, if you need to, you could play it late game. I don't, you're, this is gonna be better for you against creature-based decks, um, so keep that in mind. It's great against uh, mono red, great against warrior decks, uh, great against Winata decks, anything that you definitely need to pick things off, like mono whites, uh, also uh, things things like mono white aggro. Um, I really, really like this one. And then also some of the mid rangey type decks. Then we got Banishing Light. Uh, so we covered this one already. You're gonna play this late game. You're gonna play this against any Doom decks. Um, you're absolutely gonna wanna play this against Doom. Uh, you just gotta be careful though, because if they get you on the sack, route and you don't have the ability, even though you should be playing a permanent every turn, uh, to kind of protect it, you're gonna run into problems. Um, also against other Ugin decks, other Ramp decks, um, this is a good one for you to be playing. Uh, so you can keep that in mind. You're not gonna really play this against the early game decks, uh, but even control decks, you're not gonna wanna play this. So um, there's a nice little sweet spot for this one, uh, so keep that in mind. And then we have Gem Razor. So Gem Razor here has got Reach, it's got Trample, we can mutate for three whenever it mutates, uh, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. Uh, this is really good against late game decks. I also like it against Rogues um, for the Reach, so you can keep that in mind. It's a good good little spot for that. Anything that is running, um, uh, you know, enchantments, this works well, and artifacts. I actually don't mind it against Mono Red in the aggro lineup because uh, it hits Annex, it also hits Cleave, um, and also good against Cruel Aggro where you can hit Crow and War. A lot of people sideboard that in, so keep that in mind even for Mono Red. Um, you can hit a Crow and War with that and Cruel Aggro, you can hit it that way. Um, you can also hit uh, Great Henge, which is very important, and the Cleave still. Um, and then obviously this is great against any of the Doom decks too. Uh, so keep that in mind. Then we got Chandra Heart of Fire. So Chandra here is pretty sweet. This is an M21 Planeswalker. Um, plus one, discard our hand. We exile up to three target cards from our library until end of turn. Uh, we may play cards exiled this way. Our plus one, 
our other plus one Chandra Hutter Fire deals two damage to any target. Um, and then if we happen to go minus nine, we can search our Grave Baron Library for any number of red instants and or sorcery spells, exile them, uh, then shuffle your library. We may cast them this turn and add six mana. So that's not really gonna do much for us, um, but what you're really looking for is the, the card advantage and the ping advantage. Um, so two spots that this one uh, works nicely in. Mid-range to late game, you could use it as a pinger against some other aggro type decks or even things like Mono White. Um, but it's going to be better when you kind of run out of juice uh, in terms of draw. So this is where you're really going to play it. You're going to have a harder time getting this on the board against a control deck. Um, so this will fit well against uh, Doom decks. It will fit well against like Rakdos, Midrange, Escape, uh, you name it. Those are good ones. Um, could could run it against Sultai, uh, those kinds of things. So keep that in mind. And then last but not least, we got Vivian Monsters Advocate here. We may look at the top card of our library anytime. We may cast creature spells from the top of our library. Uh, and then we can, for plus one, we can create a 3-3 three, three, uh, Green Beast creature token that either has Reach, uh, Vigilance, or Trample on it. And then our minus two there is when we cast our next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with less or convert a mana cost, put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. So this is very powerful here. Um, very, very powerful there. So don't forget that. Um, I like this in the mid-range late game deck. It's not bad in the early game too if you do survive through um, and you can keep building some of those bodies. Uh, that's not a bad one to have in there too to kind of uh, help help you uh, stabilize the board or manage the board too. So um, that could be things like Mono Red, it could be Gruel. Um, you can run it against the Rakdos uh, mid-range decks, uh, Slesnia, Sultai, and then you could also run against Esper decks if you want it. Um, and that way, if you do have to sack it, uh, you still have the 3-3 three, three creature as well, or if you can pull it in um, and somehow cast something else, it'd be really expensive, but um, that, you know that could work for you too. So that is the main board. That is the sideboard, my friends. Um, we're now going to talk about our how-to guide in terms of an aggro mid-range and late game matchup. And that's really about what we're pulling in from the sideboard, what we're moving out of the main board uh, to help us optimize our hands and our play. Um, so when we talk about the aggro lineup here first, it's things like mono red, uh, mono white aggro. You can consider life life gain sometimes. Um, sometimes, you know, rogues decks are like aggro to mid-range depending on how they're lined up um, but again we already talked about the rogues decks and what you should probably pull in um, but when it comes to some of these other things we're still pretty well positioned because we do get a lot of creatures here um, early game and if we do move in uh, nicely in that late game it's not bad but what we definitely probably could bring in is glass casket inscription of abundance um, you could consider uh, vanishing light if you wanted to as well um, just if you need to get like Torbrand off or something like that um, th those aren't some bad bad spots Spots. Um, so if we did six, how, how would I look at moving things around? Um, you know, honestly, I would look at the top end here. Um, I would maybe keep one Ugin, maybe one Ancient, and one one uh, a comb here. Um, you can, or a Morag. Uh, you could drop some of those, and you can really optimize this top end and move it forward. That's where I would look to. Um, it's nice to have a couple of one-offs. This guy's gonna be just fine to lock up the aggro matchups, um, so you can keep that in mind. If you do need to wipe the board, at least you have one Ugin to kind of help you re. re stabilize there um, we are running 24 lands we don't have any of the other mortal lands um, so keep that in mind we just got to be a little bit careful of that in terms of uh, we're not probably going to want to cut in this because we do have higher casting costs and we do have uh, thinning and all those things um, so just keep that keep that in mind um, then next uh, or so so if we do six where, where would we move well we got one two three four five you could go five you can move out a couple of these other ones if you wanted to um be be just fine you could drop a vola cut uh as well um because that ping damage isn't going to help as much um the the uh card advantage helps but it might not be worth it uh per se as much uh in the aggro lineup so that's kind of how i think about those and you could always just cut three of those and kind of get to where you need to too if you wanted um, and then you're really playing trying to play for play uh kind of a deal as well so that's the aggro lineup. Next, we got mid range. These are things like Slesnia Adventures. Uh, these could be like the Golgari Adventures decks. Um, also, Sultai mid range. 
or even uh, for sure Rakdos midrange or escape. Um, these matches are gonna depend on whether they are control based or less creature based or more creature based. Um, so if they're more creature based, um, you're probably gonna have things like Bashing Light in there. You may have things like Inscription, may play Glass Casket. Um, if they're not, you might play Tormod Tormod's Crypt, um, or uh, you may even then consider things like Vivian, Chandra, Gem Razor, uh, if they are kind of, again, still still more creature based, um, or, or not. Um, you could also play these these guys in the mid range, as long as they're not controlly, um, those aren't bad ones to play either. So realistically, you're probably gonna move four to six. Um, what would I move out in this lineup? Um, one, lands are very important. The ramp is pretty important. Um, so I would look to optimize Banishing Light. I would look to optimize potentially Volicut, depending on the kind of deck we're playing. If we're creature-based, not so much. Uh, uh, you can definitely move this out. If it's not creature based, then you're probably gonna wanna keep this um, because they might be right in Maze Mind. We need something to keep up with Maze Mind. Um, I still like keeping early pressure with things like Fledgling and Brushfire if we can, um, and still some of the go wide strategy and the deck thinning I think is pretty important. Um, I would look to optimize the top end here depending on what kind of deck you're playing we can always move around some of these things and keep some of the key win conditions uh in place i always like the one recursion i like one of these um you know these on a double cast are nice so you could always always feel free to go one 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 um and that gives you four at the top end something different uh and that you can play around with um that doesn't necessarily have to lock you in on your win condition so that's kind of how i look at that and then last but not least we have the late game decks so these are things like your index um, you can maybe consider ultimatum at times um, again that could be one of the mid-range ones uh, but these are like esper yorian decks uh, doom decks uh, control decks, dimmer control decks, those kinds of things. Um, Tormod script maybe if they're running Esper, uh, if they're running um, other things that access their graveyard or pull back, uh, you, you're going to want to run that. Um, I, you know, you're not going to run Glass Casket. You do, probably don't need to run Inscription of Abundance, Banishing Light. You're probably going to run Gem Razor. You might in these ones. Um, so let's go like six, seven cards, maybe, uh, maybe more. How would I line up against the late game? One, I still like the aggro advantage here, um, so that's nice. Um, I would maybe keep these. Um, you could look to move out again at the top end if you wanted to and go that route, like. I was talking about kind of go one 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 there um, and that's going to give you a nice nice mix up um, the other thing that you could consider doing again depending on what they're running um, you could always pull out maybe like two fledglings and move it more so from the front to more of a midi mid-range late game battle as well uh, just depending on what they're running and how you want to play um, but certainly areas that you can cut here um, that aren't necessarily going to be prohibitive of your strategy and, and what you're trying to do um, so Planeswalkers, that is the aggro matchup, that is the mid-range matchup, and that is the late game matchup. Again, if you have questions or comments, let me know down below. Happy to help. Hop in the Discord server. Um, deck link and list is down below in the description uh, there for you too. And uh, quickly, just a couple of things that I would consider doing here. Um, I would consider, uh, you know... Uh, maybe some of the modal lands again. Um, this one you could run a crawling. It's going to be a little bit more cost prohibitive because you are running three um, and your creature heavy anyway. So I, you know this one I probably wouldn't run a Baron's on to be honest. Um, in in the decks should have it's got enough draw power um, or smoothing power here with Valakut. So that's something you could consider um, to not necessarily worry about. But you could always throw it in. Um, something that might not be bad. In here though could be a bonders um, bonders could get you at the higher end here with some of these creatures if you need to to kind of change things up um, so that could be a consideration as well the other thing you could do um, here is you could optimize more so towards the early game and pull out some of the bashing lights and move those in depending on the matchup that you're facing because it's going to help you better in the early game um, than anything else. Uh, and then you can shift into some of those more later game strategies. And at least if you're, you're getting the damage in because you're more creature based, 
um, that that could be a good idea for you on this in this deck as well. But obviously, always play these things the way that you'd like to. Um, this is the Platinum to Mythic Six Plus Win deck. I'm so happy to be covering this for you today. It's obviously competitive. It's done well, won six in a row. Um, so pretty pretty cool nonetheless. Um, so we're going to go ahead now and play some competitive magic, my friends. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, so let's let's hop in here and go for it today. All right, Naya Landfall it is. Let me just do that quick. All right. Hey, look at that. There we go. Uh, Naya Landfall. So yesterday we ran the Boros Transmogrify deck. You guys should check that one out. That was pretty cool. Um, we had uh, only lost one game yesterday, I think, with that. So you guys can hold me on this. Go watch it. Um, but no, definitely, definitely pretty sweet. Today we got Naya Landfall. Super pumped about this. So let's hop into it here uh, for our best of one matches. Now, as always, Planeswalkers... Uh, as we figure out what's going on with Dan Stronoid, uh, just want to say thank you as always. I truly appreciate your support. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Additionally, uh, like the video if you like it. Uh, you can also like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, stay up to date on content like this. All right, so we do have all the colors. Um, I'm actually going to try it, even though this is going to be terrible. We should probably look. They're probably playing mono red. Just maybe. I don't know. We 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 could go for the bait. Um, if they are, we're gonna be in we're gonna be in a world of hurt. But um, we do have one banishing light, so we'll see. Uh, we don't have to worry what we play first there. Um, the other thing, yeah, there it is. It's probably a uh, yeah, girl. There you go. Um, so what do I want to do? I think we go green. Yeah. Um. So quickly here, as we're kind of playing through this, uh, you know, trying to hit 10,000 subs. So appreciate that. Um, that was the one thing I was trying to say. Um, now we'll focus here and see what we're going to do against the Screw Lego deck. Now oh, we got everything we needed anyway. So we need a double red. And a double green. Let's throw. Let's go view battlefield. What do we have here? White. Let's scroll that one on. So next, we can actually play a Shia. Ooh, and we got it again. So this is going to be hard for them because we got a lot of big bodies. Um, I just need to figure out how I'm going to play this. They, they could have two, um, two burn cards, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. So the question is, can we double up anywhere? For 30. Here's what I think I do. We'll do this. I'm going to play... I can mutate it onto him. Let's see if we go over what happens. I don't think... I think we gotta go under. Because the power and toughness, that will be the... The big one there. So let's grab this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 
so we can play Ugin. It's lethal yet. All right. Well, you know what? They probably have. Probably have their uh, what they needed anyway, which is going to be the giants to the face. Yep. There it was. So we might have been able to play that a turn earlier. I may have missed that when I did did that math. Um, could have played Ugin earlier, and that might have that might have cost us the game actually. Um, so just so you know, I think that was the misplay there because I was one above on the creature, and then I cast twice. Um, but I'll have to ch I'll have to go back and check that. So we'll try that again. Not bad though. Not bad. I'm happy with that. We did we did okay uh, against one of the tier tier one tier two decks anyway. Uh, in best well, it's tier two I think in best of one. So, but not not terrible. Got to what we needed to. I knew they had the crusher though because we didn't block the first time. Um, and they would have took us off the board, so that, that was kind of my thing. We'll keep this, even though we don't have white, but we can get white here if we need to. So we got a food deck. Uh, so this will be this will be a good one for us. So we'll see if we can get away with this. So we can go to four. There we go. Whites, we'll get this guy in. So I think we make tokens to start here, um, but I could play, I could play the Bane Slayer next turn, uh, which would get real nasty. But I think we do. We get three. We can't get three, so we can go five. Maybe that is the right play then. Let me do this. Because then we can get two on next turn. We'll go create a 2-2. Two, two. Let's grab the whites. We'll put this guy on. And then I think we go brush and fledgling and then drop the mountain and give everything a plus one, plus one if we can. So if they have the direct damage, there we go, we're okay there.
the Vigilance. It's going to be real nice here. Um, so we can block with the fours. I don't need this per se anymore, but we'll find out. Probably could have swung in with Cobra. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, poor Philidar's retreat. Good thing we still have Bane Slayer. We can wait a turn. So we got six. We'll just swing in like that. I'm not going to trade my brush fire yet. And we'll slowly, slowly work uh, to eat them here if we can. Because we can just keep gaining life and it's going to be a while for them. And then now we can... It's too bad we didn't have Felidars because the Evolving Wild would have been super nice. Um, but we'll be able to do a lot of triggers here anyway. And the more they swing in, the more we can attack too. Oven helps them. So that hurts my Bane Slayer. Uh, I don't get that. Okay, I gotta think. Um, so you got two mana. I'm going to block here um, on the three. I'll block here. And we'll take the five. Oh, he's got the pump there. Actually, I missed that one. Ah, bummer. That's all right. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, good thing we got another one. Grab a red. Double triggers because of this guy. We got a real big guy there that can only be blocked by the love struck.
We got no more. They got a few. Oh, so many triggers. Oh, it's making me happy. Now, I'm actually going to leave the brush fire. Uh, back. Because I got no reach. That is one of the best things about playing this deck. They have what? One, two, three, four, five. They can do... We'll just keep thinning. So their out is um, they need the wolf and they need to take the Bane Slayer off. That's one out. I only got two of these guys too. to get the life. Now we got a real big body. Lots of triggers. What's that give me on that? A few things. If I want to do that, I'm going to keep thinning because I want to hit need to hit stuff. We'll swing in. <laughs> oh, 
They'll still be able to pull a guy back. But not till their turn. We'll get the double guys up there. That's fine. We get a scoot. If we can get a scoot and go wide, we'll be good. We're almost through everything. They have to get the wolf. The wolf will clear. The wolf will clear the bane slayer. Um, and we're at a we're at a risk here. Oh, they didn't they didn't take it though. They're starting to eat. They're starting to eat. Ah, oh, there's the wolf. Ah. If we get the Felidars, then we're okay. Where are they at? They're at 30. They've been through more of their deck than us. I can't pull it off yet, though. There we go. We'll keep thinning. This guy will give us another out. I'm going to save him because he's also going to be better than the, uh, the angel. So fella, this guy, the featherless fledgling... Maybe our game finisher for us uh, because we'll get plenty of triggers next turn. And anytime a creature enters, we get a trigger. So they're going to need a lot of life. And they're going to have to think pretty hard about what they hit. Close. We do have a lot of life, though. If we would have had the retreats, we would have been okay here. They should be pumping their crawling barons. Uh, 
Oh, they got their flyer. So I'll give me two. It'll be close on lethal. There we go. Probably should have made the cats first. Actually, that's all right. I'm gonna do that. We'll create some extra cats this turn. Just gonna keep pinging in here with fledgling. All right, so let's see here. That's got one. They've got three. That's all of them. So no more flyers. So we should have it next turn. Um, they, I don't even know if they have four. They're close to 44 on the board. I can create a bunch of blockers, though, if I need to. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. We have lethal with fledgling right now. Yeah, we're good. Uh, so 2020 20 blocks there. 810 blocks there. Uh, 95 block. These guys, six, six blocks there, 16, 16, actually an 8, 10, let's do this, 16, 16, uh, we can block there, uh, what's that, we can block here and there. And that's 8, 14, 19, 24. We'll take the rest of the damage.
Bane Slayer should do it for us. They don't have four. That is extremely desperate to win the match. Gotta commend that effort. Have to commend that effort. We'll see if they wait for all the triggers. Good game, we did it. We should have won that first one though too. I think it was that one little trigger mix up, like I said, against the Gruul. Um, so let's go ahead here into one more best of three. Then we'll go give it a shot at, or sorry, uh, best of one. Then we'll give it a shot at best of three. I think we're gonna run out of time here to run two best of threes today, but uh, we gotta see the deck, man. That, that, that match right there against Mono Green Food showed us everything. Um, the only things I would have boarded in, honestly, would have been, um, and we never hit Ugin there. Uh, I definitely would have boarded in, I'm going to keep this because we got Felidars. Um, I would have boarded in my good friend. Uh, ooh, there we go. Playing Cobra first. My good friend. Um, uh, the three drop exiles. Oh boy, we'll see if we can get this off, huh? I don't know about this. I feel like it's a control deck, so I'm a little worried about it. We'll try it though. Ah! Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That hurts. I should have went with the Gilded. I read it right, but I still forced it. I I deserve that. I Oh, boy. I'm gonna try and sneak this guy on. Let's see. This is a mono blue control deck. Yeah, this could be a bad matchup. That's all right, we'll see. They're gonna be a late game ooh again, which will rip my board apart. Um, and now that I got everything through, uh, we will be in trouble. That's pretty much how it works. We win because of Lotus Cobra, that'd be hilarious. Paulo Chang. Let's see, Paulo. Yeah. Ugh. There's the Juari. Good news is we can trade the whole time on it.
thought about just not playing that um just to constantly you know keep two cards in my hands but if they pump the crawling we're gonna be in trouble that's fine it's a mono this is actually a mono blue flash control deck um one that i've actually seen before so I don't know if I would have sacked the Gilded though to it yet. I may have, but. Let's see if they force it. Oh, and do it. Give him the draw. We have to block next turn. This is so painful. This is like as close as it gets to a mono blue tempo and standard. <laughs> oh, they're going for it. Yeah, once the once the Felidar didn't hit, we knew that we were in trouble. Oh. All right, we're not coming back from that. We'll go on to the next one. We'll get into our best of three match. So good matchups nonetheless. Nice to see a mono blue flash deck. Haven't done one of those yet, so on my list for sure, you guys. So um, it's a good good deck. Obviously, I lost to it here with this one, but um, should have won the first one. We took out the second one, best of three today, or sorry, best of one, and then lost the uh, third one there. So let's go ahead and play our traditional standard ranked here. Again, there's that Boros Transmog deck uh, for you, but we're playing the Naya Landfall, so you guys go ahead and check that out from yesterday. Now, quickly here, as always, wow, very quick queue. Uh, nice, we got Thunder. Um, as always, Planeswalkers, huge thank you. Truly appreciate your support. We did decent in the best of best of one. We should have won the first one. We won the second one. Um, lost the third one to a kind of mono blue flash, flash deck. Um, I will actually keep this. And we'll play with that because we do have the lineup to make it work. Um, now, quickly, as always, a huge thank you. Truly appreciate your support. So please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Uh, as I try and hit 10,000 subs this year, feel free to like uh, the video as well. And you guys can like me on uh, Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Twitch as well to stay up to date. I'm going to start live streaming here soon. Uh, and then... Uh, other great ways to support the channel down below in the description. Lots of good information there for one. So... All right, Thunder it is. We'll go Gilded. 
I'm debating if I want to turn three into this. I think I will. I think that's the right play. We'll go grab that white. And then we'll grab a second red. So we already got another green too, so we don't have to worry about it. As I say, it looks like a gruel deck, smells like a gruel deck. Uh, it's going to play like a gruel deck here. We're going to keep thinning. Cultivate is such a nice card. Uh, it really, really smooths out uh, three plus colored decks, and that works great in these landfall decks. I really wish there were more Felidar's Retreat in this deck, too. Ah, uh, Teamer. So this might be an ultimatum deck, actually. Um, very, very plausible. So let's do this. We'll go grab a white and a green. The green on there. We'll make a cat. Drop another one. We'll make a cat. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We can bring Ancient Green Warden in, and that's going to get our double triggers going. So big, big stuff here. Now, they're still a ways away. They don't know the deck either, so we're not going to block. Because we want to preserve both of these to swing in for eight. Um, so they're either going to have to deal damage right away, um, or we'll find out. So I still think we can go wide slightly, um, but we'll find out here. They may be running counters, though. If they're running a counter main board, um, Green Warden's not going to be good. One, two, three, four. Uh, we're getting close, though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's try it. They might be running that counter. If they're running a counter, we're going to be in a world of hurt here. If not, they're going to be paying pretty badly. Probably another Bone Crusher then. So we're going to get two triggers. We'll create a token and we'll do the plus ones. It actually should be the plus one than the token. Always, always mixing that up. That's not going to help you, my friend. Yeah, I screwed that up. Always forget the stack. That See, this is where it takes practice. Um, and you got to remember the first decision goes goes below and the thing on the top is going to resolve first. So what do we have here? One, two, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could go to eight and I could wipe everything if I wanted to. Um, I don't think I want to do that. But uh, here's what I am going to do. So that's lethal. So what do we want to do here? We will do this. We'll go white. All these nice triggers. One, two, three. Well, 
kind of misplayed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, no, that's fine. So that's lethal without Ugin. <laughs> oh, the ancient Green Warden is so nasty. Um, so what do I want to play here? What do I want to play here? Banishing Light is nice. It's really nice. We didn't, we haven't played, we haven't hit any skew swarms yet. Um, this isn't going to do anything. This could do something. Could do something. Banishing Light's going to do something. Uh, Chandra could do something. Some mid range match. Vivian could do something. At five, though, we want to be hitting these things. I'm going to go one. I'm going to drop on those. If anything, we want to remove. I like Chandra. If we need to. Uh, for the ping. Actually, I want to play Vivian for the card advantage. Let's do that. That's a better play, I think. We'll trade. We'll trade, trade, trade. Not play card advantage. Um, if we're efficient, like we were this match, the first match, then we'll be okay. Ooh, this is tricky. This is real tricky. Um, we can try it. We got to skew it. We got two turns to hit land. We got a lot of lands. So we're running 40% there. There we go. Is that white? Red? All right, we can hit all three. All right, so they didn't. They didn't have a burn, which is huge for us. Um, it's a huge, huge deal. Uh, because we can get this guy on the board. So if they can't remove either the brush fire or the skewed swarm, uh, we'll be in a decent spot here. Five is when they can get terror. Um, they're going to need a little bit more for ultimatum here. We're not going to block because we don't need to. All right, here we go. We got a lot of nice stuff though, my guys, at five, but we gotta get there. Need one more land. We're still sitting pretty nice. Oh, there's their cultivate. That's what we need. We need to cultivate. If we can get a Shia on the board. That would be big for us too. So now they have enough for ultimatum. Oh, there we go. I'm debating if we run Shia or Bane. I think we run the Bane Slayer. Shia might Shia would give us another trigger though. And they'd keep triggering. Oh let's I want the life gain though. Let's 
it's not going to be lethal. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So we got to move quick. So brush fire can't get he's not going to get hit except by a lovely bone crusher which they could have top decked with the edge wells um, pretty easily we'll we'll see what they got there Save one, two, three. This is gonna be four. That's another one there, actually. Oh, it's nine. Four. We can do four. I can decide if they want to lose that guy, actually. That's gonna give that another trigger. There we go. We got some big bugs going. Got a lot of bugs going now. Um, one, two. We'll keep that guy back. So he has to block with Kazandu there, otherwise it's game. Or Brazen, that's true, but I'll take the life. If they have an ultimatum, uh, and if they hit an Ugin, we're in trouble. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, that's about the one thing that will change this match at this point. Terror of the Peaks could do it too if they drop a bunch of stuff. Um, and they don't get it. So that should be enough for an ultimatum. Ooh. They don't have enough. I think we're good. We got it. We got our best of three match, my friends. Um, so let's see here. Let me check. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Oh, tempted, tempted, tempted. Maybe we'll play one more real quick. All right, let's do it. We will do it. I'm going to pay for this, so I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Obliterage. We'll probably hit an aggro deck. We'll play first. Ooh, we get to see Velcut now. Alright, we'll keep it. We got all the stuff that we need to. We have white. Yep, we got white. We're good. Ooh, we got double scooped. Um, let's do that. Is it another? Very well, could be. We'll play this guy first, though. Oh, oh. Of course, of course, we get countered. With the teamer. Yeah, it's another ultimatum deck. For sure. For sure it is. We'll take it, though. Uh, we're going to have some problems here for sure. For shoot. We 
We gotta go really wide. <laughs> that is the plan. We gotta go really wide. Really wide, really fast. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, they, they didn't have ultimatum. All right, let's see what we hit. Ooh, that's a big one. Grab that and that. Let's go with a red. We'll do it again. <laughs> oh no, we didn't have the right color. Good thing though, we can still do this. All I need is one creature though, or a burn with Bone Crusher. <laughs> I've actually never ran Scute that much. Um, it's kind of funny to see it up here, to be honest. So um, I'll, I'll take it. So we'll do the same thing that we did last time. We'll go with those. Um, the Valakut triggers were really nice. I'm gonna drop Fledgling actually, um, even though that's super aggressive. And then let's grab that one in there. We'll go one ballot cut. Just trying to think here. Well, and this works great with um, the scoot swarm too, if we can get it to go. So we just didn't, we didn't quite get that trigger. Uh, I'll keep that in there. We'll do that. That's fine. I like it. Kept the two. Well, it actually worked nice. I might try that again. Cause it was kind of funny. Um, less fledglings. I don't like that idea though. We're good on lands. Yeah, let's go one again, maybe. I'm just trying to think. Go one less than the bashing. There we go. Okay. We will try that again. It was pretty funny. <laughs> We did beat the one ultimatum already though, so you know, they just had the right stuff here for this first match where they main boarded some of those counter spells. You could tell they were frustrated though. For sure. That was a lot of triggers. A lot of triggers. I normally don't play Scoot, um, so it's uh, it's pretty funny to see it like that. I can see why people play it. All right, let's play first. Um, this is a really bad start. This is an okay start. 
not the best not what i like but we'll try it i can't uh if i go anywhere else with that we're going to be in a world of hurt i'm going to play this first so either we bank on the fledgling uh or we bank on volicut so we're going to play the turn two That's not good. I couldn't go another one. If I would have, if I would have went again, it would have been really bad. But this is a bad, bad deck that you get. You're gonna get punished against. Oh, we didn't hit it. We didn't hit it. Oh. So they for sure have ultimatum. They haven't played any creatures, so they got all ramp. They're gonna be sitting pretty good. Oh, and we get punished again, again. The Naya destroying us. Absolutely destroyed. Told you guys, I probably shouldn't have played the second best of three. This is what's happened way too many times now to me, where I'm like, oh, come off a hot best of three win, I'll go do it again, and I'll get absolutely burned. <laughs> absolutely burned. That's okay. That is what this is all about. Look at that. Another one like that. We'll play this guy, though. Let's see. If we bring it back, we, you never know. I'm not going to block. I'll give them lethal. If they have a creature, they got it. They don't want to do the same thing. All right. Hugan top end. So we actually had a decent start there. We probably could have been okay if we would have had the right color makeup. So unfortunately, we broke even in best of three today. We went one and two in best of one. Probably could have been two and one. Um, I, you know, pretty pretty fair deck. Um, obviously, really liked it. Liked it at the top. And let's go ahead here and check this one out. Um, really, really enjoyed it. I, you know, it's a it's a fun, interesting deck. Lots of triggers. You know, really with this guy. Um, um, again, in terms of the objective and the strategy, let me uh, move my position here. Uh, again, in terms of the deck and the uh, strategy, really ramping, really focused on those landfall triggers. Lots of cool interactions at the top end that can happen. Lots of benefits. Now, you know, it's not super streamlined because we do got a lot of two ofs. Um, so there are some things that you could do there uh, to kind of optimize. We didn't get to see... Uh, fury of a comb here the the minotaur warrior legend um was one of the only cards i think that we didn't get to see but i was super excited that we got ancient green ward in here um very very fun to see the double triggers all those things there's a great match against the cruel one there in best of one we did a great job uh in our best of, first best of three match against the ultimatum deck played that second ultimatum deck got a billion triggers uh, but just could not could not pull through um unfortunately they had enough to to get through so um really enjoyed this deck hope you guys liked it uh here's the sideboard again um you know not a ton of things that we moved in just i mean it worked out um we obviously won the one we did the same thing for the second one we hit a different kind of uh play style so that's that's one of the things i like about these kinds of decks is every time you play it it plays differently this one certainly does um lots of good interactions for you so um planeswalkers with that said i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh today's episode of top deck if you got questions comments let me know down below happy to help or hop in the discord server uh that's down in the description would love to see you um, and additionally, 
uh, great ways to support the channel down below. Uh, please feel free to subscribe down over there as I try and make my way towards 10,000 subs this year. You guys can like the video. You can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, stay up to date, content like that, or become a patron or a YouTube member. Great ways for us to interact with uh, deck lists and fun things. So um, with that said, lists are down below for the deck. I might've forgot to mention that. Um, so you do have access to it right away. And this was a six plus platinum to mythic win. Certainly playable, certainly doable. Um, you guys beat it. We beat a nice deck. Ultimatum is a good deck um, with a fun deck. Um, not that Ultimatum isn't, but uh, with that, I, I hope you guys uh, stay safe. You take care. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Top Deck. Uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Uh, we got a lot more things coming your way here for January. So um, stay in touch. And until next time, uh, Mithras out. And I'll be back.